Hey, good day, everybody. Welcome to yet another interview, or should I call it a presentation uh, or a panel discussion. This one is uh, the one you've been waiting for quite some time. Uh, and this one is aptly titled Meeting of the Minds, the discussion, a panel discussion between handlers par excellence. Um, now, this is an inter this is actually a discussion, a panel discussion I've been waiting to do for quite some time because as uh, somebody who's interested in handling, somebody who has wanted to handle uh, or rub shoulders with somebody like Tron or Yanis or Diego, I've uh, not been successful as yet. So I thought, what is the next best thing I can do? So the next best thing I can do is I can invite them to actually come into my uh, come into my show, and uh, maybe I can drop shoulders with them. You know, maybe I can get their knowledge, their experience, uh, get them to share their knowledge and experience. And thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, coming uh, coming forward to share your knowledge and experience, and in short, your journey, uh, which has led you to such success. Uh, now, before I go ahead and get into the meats and potato of this session, I want to actually introduce you to my panelists today. Um, and you can actually see uh, their names on the screen. Uh, but my first, the first panelist I want to I want to introduce today is Yanis Yanis Vlachos, um, who Hello. hails from Greece. Uh, Yanis, uh, welcome to the show. And. Uh, Thank you very much. And Yana started showing dogs as a semi-professional handler uh, at the age of 18. And uh, since then, uh, he has shown breeds uh, from all the FCI groups. Uh, and he's made up many champions, national, international, world champion. Um, he's won uh, best in shows in uh, many classes, in adult, junior, veteran, puppy, baby, in Greece. And also in some major shows overseas, like Crops or World and Euro Dog Show. Helsinki show, uh, to name a few. Uh, now, Trond, um, on the other hand, uh, hails from uh, Norway. Uh, Trond, welcome to the show. Um, Trond uh, always had boxes in his life, but that's, he, didn't, he didn't start with boxes, though. Uh, he started showing boxes in the year 1987. Um, Trond, I'm actually aging you here. Maybe Diego would, would be saying I was in school that time. What are you talking about? Uh, but still. Um, this was in 1987 that uh, Tron got introduced to a miniature schnauzer, and uh, he got to start, you know, show this dog at a show for his sister. Uh, of course, there was no looking back. Uh, he got his first dog in 1988, not a boxer, again a giant schnauzer, and uh, he, with that dog, he actually, you know, got uh, a best in show. Um, Tron, uh, of course, got his first boxer in the year 1990 uh, from uh, Wild Con boxer, Johan Miller, um, who completed um, his championship title, lived on to an age of 13 and a half years. Um, Tron shows um, in quite a few European countries, uh, and he has handled many breeds, uh, and he thoroughly enjoys um uh, showing dogs and obviously and that's a misnomer that's why everybody is here they all show like showing dogs uh last but not the least diego welcome to the show um hi how are you thank you thank you very well diego thank you and uh diego needs uh, uh very little or no introduction but i still have to introduce introduce as a as a moderator um diego is i'm going to tell you something which i found about Diego on the website, uh, something that not a lot of you might know. Uh, Diego's uh, early memories, um, something that he remembers like yesterday, uh, was of a dog show uh, that he showed a plain brindle boxer. Now, he actually got third in the class. He didn't win the breed. He didn't get the ticket, but he got third in the class. So when he was coming back home after winning that show, uh, he could not stop talking about the dog. He kept on talking about the dog, uh, continued talking about the dog, and uh, to a point where um, maybe somebody said, in order to stop, make Diego stop talking, they said, maybe you should start showing dogs more since you like this so much. And uh, that was probably the day when Diego decided that he was going to handle dogs for his life. Uh, Diego is uh, a highly successful handler who initially is from, uh, who originally is from Argentina, who has uh, moved to the United States, lives in Louisiana. Um, he's a very successful... Uh, Lily, no, not Carolina. 
North Carolina. Yes, of course. Thank you. And uh, a hugely respected handler from the United States. Um, and uh, just a bit about me. I'm a kid in a candy store. So I actually am uh, excited and looking forward to interviewing these uh, handlers who are, according to me, are masters in ring, ring craft uh, presentation and uh, most importantly are quick to think on their feet. And that's what I feel primarily differentiates between uh, between a novice handler and somebody who does that for a living or somebody who does it on a different level. Uh, now, just to set the premise for this session, this panel discussion, um, I have put together some questions um, and I invite you to also put your questions under the comments so that I can ask those questions to my panelists. But I've not shared any of my questions with my guest. Uh, this, what you're going to hear, you're going to you're going to hear these questions along with them, or they're going to hear these questions along with you. So, you know, it's going to be a best, it's going to be a test of their situational awareness. It's going to be just simulating what they do when they shoot a dog inside the ring. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting and I'm excited and I'm looking forward to it. Um, gentlemen, how, how do you feel about taking on all these questions? We feel good. I mean, it looks like, like we are ready. <laughs> we are ready. We are ready. Yeah. Okay. I agree. All right. Well, we are we are like, the only the only thing is we are, we are not masters on on anything. We are just you know we start like every single human person that likes to love and love to show dogs, and we will we always try to improve ourselves, looking and watching the real top handlers, you know, over the years. So mm -hmm. so we are here. We are not we are we are not masters, you know, because we still we have like owner handlers that they would love to do this, and we all start the same the same way, you know. And um, believe me, we didn't start with the greatest boxer either. So you know what I mean? It just take take time, the uh, years, and, and every single weekend is always something that you can really add to the to your book, you know? So so that's you know very that's true. that's how I feel. That's how I feel. Very true, very true. Uh and I think I think you said uh, said a lot in there. Um but in all modesty, I think uh, I don't want to take anything away from um you gentlemen, you gentlemen have actually uh, repeated success uh, many times over, and uh, there is knowledge for people to learn from your experience. Um, I want to actually start off this quest, this session with uh, with a question, Diego. I would like to start this session with you. Um, I know that I've heard uh, that a box. You've shown many breeds, but a boxer is one of your favorite breeds to show. I want to understand what makes a boxer one of the favorite breeds for you to show? I mean, I've been showing, my, my, I mean, like, like my parents, they, they've been breeding, I mean, for years, uh, boxers, uh, chows, bulldogs, you know, English bulldogs and bath and hounds. But, um, um, and boxers, of course, was, was our choice. I like, I like to show all breeds, but I mean, boxers, is, they're very special, you know, they're a very sensitive, very sensitive breed, you know, they're really, uh, if you're not having a great date, I mean, they're always looking at you, like, like almost talking to you, like, like what's going on, you know? And, and, and when you show them, this is my opinion, my particular opinion, I find out like really like boxers is really one of the hardest breeds for me to show, for me to show. You know, uh, uh, if you show a Doberman, another working breed or a Doberman, I remember my parents, they, when they used to breed boxers and they have some puppies, in the meantime, I used to go to my client's house, and they have Doberman. And it was quite, quite a, a, a something special to see when my clients, they have puppies at the same time, totally different situation. Those Dobermans, they was already, like, looking at you, you know, like, very young puppies, you know, but boxers, more sensitive, more kind of alert, you know, and, I, and you know, very, very special. And, and that's one of the reasons, I mean, uh, it was one of my, my, my particular breeds that, that I always had in my heart, you know? When I go to show, right. when I go to a show, when I show different breeds or I see different drinks, I get excited. Uh, but when I'm with, with, with a boxer and I try to always, if I don't show a boxer at the time, I try to squeeze in around the ring and see if I can watch a little bit, a little bit the, the breed, you know? It is, it is a very, right. very special breed, you know, very special breed. 
Thank you, thank you, Diego. Um, John, over to you. Um, why do you like a boxer? You started with a giant schnauzer, but uh, why did you? Uh, I know I'm not going to ask you why you switch over to a boxer, but why do you like showing a boxer so much? Well, when I was young, we had a boxer at home then, and uh, it died about uh, nine years old, and it was uh, out of the question to get another one because, uh, well, uh, they are quite unique, and we didn't want to compare and all these things, so. Uh, uh, my sister got a, a miniature schnauzer, uh, a black and silver, actually the first uh, miniature uh, black and silver litter ever in Norway. And uh, to get it, they had to sign up to show it a bit, and uh, mm -hmm. they wasn't uh, ready for it. So I stepped in and showed the dog, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. he was quite successful as a pup. Uh, his mouth uh, went wrong, so I stopped showing him. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no need to drive around and showing a dog with a wry mouth. Uh, and uh, I was a bit into giant schnauzers as well, so I bought my first giant schnauzer uh, because uh, the, the tail docking stopped in, in 1st of July in 88 right. in Norway. Right. And uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, breeding for the docking breeds here, so uh, you could get the hand of uh, a nice one. Mm, and uh, true, true. and uh, I, I, I stopped, started showing them and uh, I always talked about I wanted a new boxer for myself and uh, uh, I was joining the show committee in the local dog club and uh, the, there was a friend from school actually there and uh, we were having the same interest for boxers and we uh, mm. contacted so the UK and we bought, imported each so, John, what, 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 why again? What, why do you like boxes? Is my question. So, is is that uh, is that about is that something they, about boxes which is very endearing for you? Yeah, it, they they have great personalities. Uh, personalities. Yes, and a bit sometimes a bit too much of them self minded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but True. it's a fun dog, and uh, mm. and uh, the temperament is. Uh, can be pretty good, uh, mm. uh, and it's we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna talk about temperament in more detail. But thank you so much, John. Um, now, Vianis, I want to actually ask you this. Uh, I want to end this question with you. So, what about the personality of a boxer? Do you like? Do you like a lot? Um, what is what is one single thing that you like about a boxer that makes you want to actually? I know you breed boxers yourself. Yes. Uh, yes. You you had good success with boxers. What what is it that you like about boxers that you you know? That's well, not another breed. Yes. What I like in the breed, uh, of course, I'm breeding boxers, but what I like in this, breed, uh, in this breed to show is that you have to have a special connection with a dog to show. It's not like another breed, like a pointer or some other dogs that they, are, they can go with any person. So you have to, to, to win their, um, their, their, their trust and mm -hmm. uh, be well with you in the ring. So I think you have to have a special connection with a dog and to have the very best results. Otherwise, you cannot get um, the very best of the of the breed. Right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you so much for that. Just, just a uh, very, uh, just a very quick thing. You know, I was I was doing. I have a feel, uh, a big feel in the bag, and I do a golf cart every morning with the dog. And I went early this morning, and I did golf cart with every single dog. But when it was time with the boxer, I finished. And she was looking at me. And if you don't take her and she sits right next to you in the golf cart and you take her a little bit around the field, she's just not a happy camper. You know what I mean? And Yanis, he, he's very, he, he's, he's true about it. You know, he's telling the truth. The boxers are really special. But you can say today it's a hot day here, but I get up very early. But everybody was ready to come in. But if she doesn't sit right next to you in the golf cart, it's, the, the day is, is not ended there. You know what I mean? It's... Uh, He's right. Uh, again, he's very right when we what he's saying. True, perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I, I think it's it's a very uh, it's a breed. I think once a boxer, uh, once you get associated with boxer, you will actually you would you would miss them and you would always want to have them around. Totally, totally understand and agree with that. Um, John, I want to actually I want to start this next one with you. Um, now, you actually in your journey in your journey that you have uh, had. You've shown many dogs, you've shown, uh, but you also 
changed, right? Like just like um, evolution is normal, everybody changes, everybody learns. What have you learned as a handler? How? What are some of the things that you learned as a handler? And also, what are some of the things that you do? I want to actually make it a little bit difficult for you and for everybody. Um, of course, I'm going to start with Tron. What are some of the things, compromises, that you have had to adopt with handling? So that's something that you don't like, but you still do. Uh, what I learned, uh, as Diego says, uh, I, I was traveling a lot, uh, not only to show dogs, but to watch the shows. I enjoy really to watch shows and handlers them. And you try to learn about the dogs and to learn about the good handlers as well. Then uh, uh, you try to copy some of it, but you have to do uh, try to find your own things to be comfortable with what you're doing. Uh, and, and not at least with boxes, you have to be comfortable. As Jan is pointed out, <laughs> they're very own minded, some of them, and you got to earn the trust and earn the things, or else where they won't do anything for you. Uh, so, what I learned is, is watching others. Uh, I asked a lot of questions to good handlers and good dog people in general and showed many breeds because it's learnful for for me to, as Janis said as well, uh, there's some breeds are, the breeds are very different, the boxes are very special. Uh, and it's, uh, when you get older, you, you learn more, you're more self-confident as well. Uh, and you should be at the show, uh, show the self-confidence you had got a nice dog. <laughs> uh, and you know you got a nice dog and the, and the boxing knows if it's nice, it's nose. Uh, uh, but you have to travel a lot uh, to learn. Look at the good people, uh, what you think are the good people. You, you see them winning. Uh, mm. uh, that's what I learned. Uh, not compromising so much. I, I, I don't want to show... Um, I saw the way I saw a, a boxer. And uh, if uh, people aren't happy with the way I show my boxer, I, I say no. Uh, mm. I don't want to show it because I can't do it that way. Uh, it's, it's just not for me then. Right. Thank you. Um, Janice, why don't I take this to you next? What do you, what, what are your, um, what have you, what have you, um, in terms of the evolution, how have you evolved? How do you see yourself having evolved as a handler? Well, I will I agree with uh, Trod. Um, I had the same things. I, I, I had to travel a lot while I was young and uh, younger, and uh, I had to go at crafts many, uh, many times, and I was uh, very much amazed of the all uh, owners, handlers mainly, that they were showing their dogs there. They, for me, the the overall quality of the handling in, in, in UK is really top, and it's mainly uh, owners. Um, of course, in the States, the, the presentation of the, of the breed is really high, but we are speaking about professional handlers. Um, so I was there watching all days the handlers, what they do, and how they, they get the very best out of the dog. So, and then coming home and practicing, practicing, practicing hard. Uh, when I was young, we didn't have the YouTube or uh, Facebook, so it was very hard to, to follow all the shows. So we had to go there and see. Um, and um, I think this is the key uh, of becoming a better handler all the time, watching the very best and try to uh, adjust their, their, what they are doing to your, um, to your handling way. You cannot do right. everything. There are things that they cannot do, uh, and uh, um, but you can adjust some things. Uh, what I don't like, and I don't use, I don't do that at, on the on the shows. It's I don't like the sparing that we we used to do that. They used to do that a lot of, in in Europe, in the, at the European shows. So uh, in the past, uh, in uh, when we were when we had the boxer uh, ring. I was the only one that I was showing uh, top and tail, and all the rest were doing double handling and sparing. So, uh, but I don't like sparing at all. Uh, I think you can see the the temperament of of the boxer if if, if you show it top and tail. You don't have to have another dog in front. Um, so, in my opinion, of course. Right, right. 
Uh, Diego, I actually want to uh, ask you this. Uh, what are I, I know that you are a wonderful ambassador for the breed. You know, I've heard interviews uh, where you actually uh, where you actually you know um, showcase all the right reasons. But is there something that you uh, that you don't like about the dog shows? Oh, I almost, uh, uh, I'm going to be 50 years old and I spent almost my whole life in bowling dogs, you know, and, 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 and when I was young, that excitement in going to the show and, and get a dog ready and see my parents bathing the dogs and, and, and go to the show, I still am a highly believer on, on, on keeping those, those uh, uh, excitements, you know, every, every single day. I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed over the year with sportsmanship. You know what I mean? Sportsmanship is one of the topics, highly, highly, in my opinion, uh, these days. You know what I mean? I mean, being, it's been through the, through the years. You know, uh, poorly, poorly sportsmanship between, between competitors, owners, and very poorly, poorly sportsmanship between handlers. Because at the end of the day, no matter if you're a handler or a handler, you try to do the best you can. What, what you have in front or what will you bred in the whelping box. So you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a highly believer that every single dog that made it, made it to, the, to be in the top 10 or to top 5 in this breed, they have something highly to, to, to offer. And, and it's very it, it, it getting into my mind over the years how poorly, you know, sometimes uh, uh, people or handlers, uh, they act in about certainly part of each dog, you know what I mean? So, so that's one of the main right. things, you know, that, that really getting into, you know, into, into this, into these days, because like when you compete, uh, that's a, that's a big thing that I'm, I'm a big fighter of this. You don't have to go and talk to the judges. You don't have to go. If you really want to learn and talk and ask something to the judge, and not in particular dogs, in particular about the standard or another breed, mm. that's, a, that's, that's a totally different game. But you don't go and go and, go and, and talk about the, the competition or things like that, you know? That was one of the, that's not one of the main really things uh, that got getting into my, my, my mind these, these years. And right. About, right. about judging, I mean, uh, you have judges that, that maybe you win, you lose, you got your dog ready for the next day. It's a totally different ball game, you know. You have to really understand what you have in your hands. Believe me, and mm. they're not perfect. Only perfect dog is when, when they make on those statues, you know what I mean? And, and they've made <laughs> the perfect shape, perfect eyes, and perfect mouth, and perfect everything. But right, sportsmanship, right. sportsmanship is really, really something that, that get a little bit my, 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 I need milk on my coffee, you know. True, very true, very true. Um, I want to actually, uh, I want to take this next one with uh, with Yanis. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm not going to go in this order after this question. I was just being nice, so I actually went with one of them. I'm going to actually, questions are going to come your now. way. You're not going to be nice uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Yanis, this is a question I have for you. So I know you started showing. Uh, all of you gentlemen have at least... I would say 20 years of showing, uh, of, if not more. <laughs> um, when you started showing, you actually had dogs. You took on any dog that people would give you because, you know, you were new. You were actually getting established. You know, you were starting, you know, you will take on any dog, whether the dog is easy to finish or hard to finish. And you had to work with easy dogs. Of course, the dogs finish quickly, but with hard dogs and i say hard dogs the dogs you had to work extra hard as a handler to finish them right you had to work extra hard my question is this with you having got to a place where you are right now you are actually you know you're quite reputed reputed you are actually successful people look at you and say hey if you have if i give the dog to tron or diego or yanis that dog is going to finish the dog is going to compete right and right now you get offered better quality dogs people who have bred good dogs they come to you and they say oh can you show my dog please can you please show my dog you get to show the dog do you feel it's become easy for you now 
Do you think it's become easy for you to show dogs now because you have become, you've gotten success? And uh, how has things, how has it, you know, changed for you? Well, as you said, in the beginning, because I had to, to practice with, uh, with more dogs, I, I could show uh, any kind of dog. And because I wanted to have practice and, uh, more and more. Um, yes, the last years I'm more selective and uh, I can um, pick up the best dogs, um, in my opinion, and uh, the dogs that they can go better on the finals and they can do well. Um, uh, but um, on the other hand, it's, it's a challenging sometimes to, to try to, to work with hard dogs. And... Uh, um, it's 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 you, 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 it can be a very pretty dog, but a very difficult in character. So it's very uh, it's a bit it it's it's uh, you need a lot of um, effort to to bring the dog in this situation uh, to to win. Um, and as you said, there are many people that they are saying, of course, this is a, a good handler. It, it's Diego or Trod or Yanni showing the dog and. He will win, and the dog is not so nice, but nice. But the dog is winning because of the handler. But I will say it in a different way, in the reserve way. I have seen many nice dogs that they have been shown by by not good handlers. They then they were spoiled. And why don't not why why not so, uh, someone say something about this? Uh, I get more upset when I see nice dogs showing in a bad way. I said it's a, such a nice dog, but in, in, with a different handler, it, he could win. Best in show, for example. So, mm -hmm. um, this is my opinion. Okay. All right. Thank you. Who wants to go next, gentlemen? Um, I oh, let you decide. I I agree uh, with Yannis here. It's uh, uh, I started as well with uh, take whatever I, you could get at some shows, some shelters and things, which I I didn't know anything about really, but I handled them and. Did okay then, and uh, of course a hand can uh, can give you uh, good result, and because uh, you have done this for years and years, and you, you come if you want to learn, you come you become better. And uh, but it's not not uh, not all about the handler. It's it, as Yannis said, it's all about uh, it's about the dog as well. Uh, a, a judge will know a good dog. Uh, he might know the handler as well, but he still judges the dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, but but the presentation of a very good handler is can be uh, uh, provide you more to put it out. More people should use better handlers or do more homework. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. my opinion. I uh, uh, both Diego, Yannis, and me. It hasn't come for free. We we, we traveled a lot. We see a lot. We, we do practice a lot, uh, and all, all of us have uh, have done several breeds, and and I think that's learnful to do several breeds and se several minds. Uh, boxes can be very hard to show because they are <laughs> very mm. own minded. Some of them, if mm. they don't want to go, they don't want to. <laughs> right. True. Agreed. Keep, keep the dog happy. It's uh, basic. Mm. True. True. Um, and Diego, repeat it. You know me. Repeat. Okay, no, 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 for sure. Simply. No, for sure, for sure. Uh, has it? Well, people might think it's easy for you to finish a dog. Is it actually easy for you to finish a dog? Absolutely not. It's not easy to finish a dog. We always think that probably is easy to finish a dog, but um. I don't know. I was just follow a little bit what everybody was saying. And the only thing that I have to say is uh, when you, when they approach you to show a dog, this is when, even when I was young, I have the same, the same sensation. I mean, you, you have to have feelings for the dog. I'm a particular mm. person that if I really, they show me a dog, it can be a really a great dog or just a, a nice dog. If I don't have feelings for the dog, I just, I'd rather walk away. You know what I mean? Because I have to, I have to convince the dog that he's the greatest thing that walks on earth. I have to spend a lot of time and dedication. I, so you have to have feelings, feelings for the dog. Most of the time, 
Uh, uh, of course, like we always start, you know, with a boxer, probably it's not the greatest boxer, but uh, I, I've been so lucky enough over the years to get involved with people that they was really uh, obsessive with their breeding and, and what the expectations. So, so they encouraged me on that kind of situation. Even my, my, my parents, when we were showing, when we were showing boxers. So, so, you know, uh, uh, you have different mm -hmm. levels of dog. You can finish a dog or this a dog that maybe you can compete for, for best in mm -hmm. shows, you know, uh, it's, it's depends mm -hmm. what, what, what they have, but you have to have your, your, your heart got to be there, you know, even if you have to, we all have to make a living. Don't get me wrong, but I brother turn off the light and pay a little bit less of, of my expenses and, 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 Mm. I just wait for the right moment. I mean, you know, uh, mm. that was kind of my my my, my feeling. Right. I mean, my entire life. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I want to ask you actually ask you a same question, and th th this gentleman is open for anyone that wants to take it. Um, your understanding of the anatomy of the dog, right? Your understanding how the dog's anatomy looks. Uh, works because you actually have to press in the silhouette of the dog when you stack the dog you have to show the dog press in the picture of the dog which is of a winner then you have to then move the dog you have to move the dog and every dog's anatomy decides how the dog is going to move whether it's going to move uh, freely or if it's going to move you have to make any changes to adjust the dog now when you take that dog I know, Diego, you mentioned that. You mentioned that it's not just the dog, it's also the personality of the dog. It's also the personality of the owner as well, right? You know, basically that. Now, what makes you take on a dog? What makes you take on a dog? Is it actually a dog which is perfect in, is it, is it perfect in anatomy? Um okay with the relationship what do you give more importance do you do you give it more just for the anatomy of the dog or the personality of the dog and the owner which one do you give more importance to i don't do you guys want me to, i can talk yes yes <laughs> sure. yep. uh, like my particular my particular case i really uh, uh being obsessive with the standard and and i'm probably i don't want to be controversial in this but I'm a great believer on the standard 150%. Mm. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I find out really dogs that are not quite closer to the standard, but in some ices on the cake, they are extremely excellent, extremely excellent. So what makes me feel and made me think that wow i mean even if it's not the close to the standard and maybe i have they may they, they maybe offer me a dog that is pretty close to the standard is a really beautiful dog i mean there are so many many parts on boxers that they're very hard to hard to get and try, you know very hard to understand that probably that dog has something really special to offer yeah you know what i mean and sometimes i i got into myself a little bit I took a little bit of detour on the road. You know what I mean? Because, because of that kind of particular thing, you know what I mean? Uh, that, that, that dog have to, have to offer. Is that the, you understood? You guys understood a little bit? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I quite, yep. Absolutely. I quite, yep. you know, like, like when we're talking about, I mean, temperament of movement, these are really high topics these days that, that are very, very hard to get. You know what I mean? A really good movement, a really, a really, we, this is what I see because, you know, I'm a little obsessive. We, I've been seeing the hawks on the rears, on the dogs. We, I, I love to see a strong hawk, like two rocks in the rear, same amount of bone in the front, same amount of bone in the rear. And I just, there are details that I see around that, that it makes you feel why you make the decisions on showing a dog or not? You know what I mean. Uh, I mean that's that's how right. how I that's how I feel. You know that's how I feel it. 
Probably That's I didn't perfect. answer what you asked me, but I mean, probably. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you gave, you gave me more. I'm sorry to the no, no. and all of you, you know what I mean? But it's things like that, you know? Uh, uh, well, you, I get it into you, you my get... mind that it's some, every dog has something special to offer. And mm, it's easy sure. from outside. It's easy from outside. Criticize mm. that dog, but it's hard mm. to get inside and enjoy that dog. Okay. Let me ask you a question next, based on what you said. Um, you actually have shown uh, many dogs that you've gotten a lot of success with. What have been some of the common things mentally that these dogs have had that has gotten them all that success? Is it because of the dogs having that success or is it something you did? Absolutely, the dog having the success. Without the okay, dog, can... you can never you can never reach. It's you know going nowhere. You can have the greatest hand, but if you don't have the material, if you don't have to, you don't have the car to win the race. You're not gonna get first. You're just not gonna make yes. it. You know what I mean? Sure. And, and and they have to have. I mean, they jump on you, and they have to be there for you from day one. They want to do this because remember, as a handlers, me, Yanis, and Tor. I mean, we 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 travel all over to show these dogs. And if you're running out of fuel by, by the half a weight of, of the race, you're just not going to make it. You, you know what I mean? You're just True. not going to make it. True. Uh, Diego, I want to come back to this question to you again. Uh, but, um, John, do you have, um, is there any common element between dogs that you found a lot of success? Like, for example, is there, is there something that the dog had in terms of its personality that made them winners. What was that? Do you have anything to add to that? Sometimes uh, you got a dog and it uh, it, uh, it uh, just do what they need to do at the point and the, and the longer in the competition they get, the, the better they get actually. It's what uh, more or less a show head or something. Uh, uh, with them, it's uh, interesting to see how it, uh, how dogs uh, uh, get better. How hard the competition get they get better so, some of them, uh, uh, but they all got to have as Diego said as well. You got to have some connection both ways. Uh, they got to have something. Uh, uh, to win, they got to have something, and uh, sometimes it, sometimes you get a difficult dog, but you got to work a bit harder with the connection. Uh, and some you don't have connection with, and and uh, you pass it on to another one because it's it's the better thing for the dog. That I don't show it. Uh, it could be a temperament thing or whatever. Uh, it, it, did that answer your question? <laughs> Uh, yes, it, it does. But I want to actually get a little bit. I want to get a little bit more from Yanis as well. So, what do winning dogs, according to you, have some unique personality traits that make them big winners? For me, yes. Of course, you need a, 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 a dog that is very well constructed. But there are some dogs that you see that since they are puppies, that they have this charisma, the temperament, that they, they get into the place and they say, like, look at me, I'm the star. So if um, you have a puppy with a, a good conformation and uh, um, uh, he has this charisma, then, of course, you can do really well in the rings. For me, they, they, they should have both to have a big winner. So you can have a dog with a great temperament, but, but not so well constructed. And then you can have um, a dog with uh, uh, good conformation, uh, but not with this showy temperament. So you need both. And of course, with a good connection with the handler, you can, you can do really well. Okay. Uh, Diego, I'm coming back to this, uh, with this one to finish this one here. Um, you said 100, 150%. You said 150%, right? Yes, you did. 150 percent. A little more. No, no, no. A little bit more. Yes, of course. So, 150 percent standard and personality, right? Now, with with a handler, with somebody who does this, you know, who's actually shown different dogs. Do you feel you cannot change what is not there because that is the basically the that is the foundation, right? 
How much do you think handlers can change the personality of a dog, the winning mindset of a dog? And how do you do it? The handlers can change the personality of the dog, absolutely, for sure, in my opinion. I mean, and everybody can disagree or agree with this. Uh, you can have a dog that probably is a little, a little insecure, or, and, and you can work through that, I mean, uh, 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 with work and every day, and then, and just probably, probably some dogs, they can, be, they, they can through, uh, and some dogs maybe they can have a way, but absolutely the handlers, they can change uh, uh, those, those attitudes on, on, on their dogs. It's a constantly work, like, like almost every day, and, 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 and the way that you treat them, the way that you touch them, you know, uh, uh, like, like here, we're on top of them 24-7. You have to get those dogs on the table. You got to talk to them. You got to feel them. You got, you know, if you have to see, always got to be alert on any reaction that you would pour probably you're going to have to work through, you know. And they, then you have youngsters, you know, that they need a lot of work too. So absolutely the, 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 the way, they, the, way they, the handlers, they act and they proceed with them, the way they're using their hands, is you can get through, you know, you can make them feel the greater thing uh, that works on earth, or maybe you can feel them the, the very insecure. Is a pen of is a pen of, of the the handler's ability on on how to how to treat them. True, uh, true. Um, I I know that uh, this you know I know this is going to be a it's going to be a hard question. Now this one I'm going to ask you. I'm going to warn you, forewarn you. This is going to be slightly harder. Let's say for example. You start off, you get, you get like about six dogs. You get six new clients, six new dogs in your, in your kennel. And these are the dogs you're going to show for the next two months. And um, when you get these dogs, um, you, do you actually, do you, do you actually develop favorites? Do you develop favorites with one of them? Or you know, basically, with with them, is it hard? Is it easy or hard for you not to form that favorite relationship with one dog in a pack of dogs that you show? Go ahead, Yanni. <laughs> well, well, in in Europe, the system is totally different comparing to the to the states. We, I don't keep the dogs in my place, so um, I go and visit the dogs and have practice with them in parks and. Uh, so it's totally different than Diego. Diego, I, I always follow him and he is working with the dogs 24-7, And he said, as he said. So I'm amazed and I wish I could do this uh, also. Um, um, well, sometimes, of course, there can be some favorites, but you need to try the same with all of them. So it, it, you may have a better connection with a dog, but you need to try the same with all six of them. This is, for me, what I'm doing. Uh, and, of course... It's a, it's a relationship, uh, it's a living uh, thing. So sometimes with some dogs, you, it, it can work better and with some other, it cannot have this special connection. So, um, but I do the same with everyone. I don't have uh, any, fa not favorite. I, 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 I try to give the balances between all six, let's say. Right, right. Uh, what about you, what about you, Tron? The same thing as Yanni said, we don't have the dogs at home here. We uh, basically in Norway, uh, especially in this pandemic, pandemic time, we, we just meet at the shows and there's only one dog and, uh, and <laughs> the handler them to go into the show and the owner will have to be left outside. And uh, But uh, we don't keep them at home. Uh, we do some messages or phones and, and, uh, and we make deals on uh, meeting or and some of them you do some training with, and some of them you just occasionally comes and can you show this dog and you got uh, trouble. <laughs> no, right. uh, you got, that, that's what you do. Uh, but I agree to, uh, as Janne said, if when I was younger as well, I would love to have them at home uh, and do the homework myself and, uh, and uh, do the connection thing for myself. Right, uh, right. And now we got about five minutes in front of a show to to do some connection thing, and uh, and you feel it quite quick if it works or not. I think. True, true, true. 
And uh, what, what about you, Diego? Do you have any, um, when you're actually having a dog, when you're having six or five or six dogs, do you, do you actually, is it, is it, it doesn't happen often that you, you make that connection with that one dog, which is more than the other dogs? You know, to telling you the truth, I mean, being lucky on living here in the state and have the opportunity that I can live with them and my clients are like my family and they send these dogs and they live with us probably, you know, period of one, two years. We really have the connection with the dogs that we have at the house. For the time, for the minute that we decided with Evelyn, I said, okay, we would like to spend maybe a couple of years with this dog, even if it's a boxer, or Pomeranian or Brittany or Foxhound or anything or Doberman. I mean... Uh, to really, to everybody can understand, they're all boxers for us. You know, mm. they're all boxers because, uh, like I say before, if I don't have that connection, you know, I'm excited when I train the, the boxer. I finish during the day, 10, 15 minutes, and I grab the Pomeranian like he's a boxer. I get it into my mind. I put my hands and, and work with the Pomeranian like a Pomeranian. That's another mm. big difference. You know what I mean? You can show every, every single breed have their own, you know, their own way, you know? So, uh, but we have the connection with those, those five, six dogs. That's one of the main reasons that, in my opinion, we have to make a living, and I totally understand. But in our particular case, it's hard to handle a lot of dogs because, I mean, you're going to have to have emotions with all those dogs. So, mm. so... Uh, that would make a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, bitter uh, when the times come that they got to go home. It's, it's very, very hard for me, for me mm. and Evie, you know, they, they have to go and, 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 and it, it's hard. But, but you have to have that connection, you know. I mean, it's always that, that, you know, we have to make a living, but, but if that connection is not there, you know, you better find, mm. you know, another swimming pool to swim, you know. It's just, just it's, True. it's hard, you know, it's very hard. Pick up another profession. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, now, I've seen this one, um, and this is very true of the breed. I'm very, it's a very breed-specific question, and I'm asking you this one. Um, the front of a boxer, you know, the front of the boxer, the way the boxer is set up. Uh, people, actually, people actually, you know, I, I was reading an article uh, that Shirley Bell had written. Shirley Bell actually says, the front is the most confused topic. People say, oh, that dog has got excellent front. That dog has got a uh, bad front. Um, you know, they talk about 45 degree. They talk about 90 degree angle. People, I don't know if people understand the front. It's the way they should be. But I know that it's important for you as handlers when you set up the dog um, to know how the front is, whether the dog has got a bell angulated front or it's got a straight front. Um, do you, and again, as handlers, you know, you, what you do is you um, manipulate or you actually, I'm not, manipulate is not a wrong word here, by the way. Manipulate is the way you present the dog. You know, that's, you're showing the dog, the presenting the advantages and hiding the disadvantages of the dog. But, how much can you manipulate the construction of a dog in stacking or in movement? Something which is not there. And that's how, that's what differentiates. If that's a differentiation between a, a I'm handler not, who's... I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I interrupt you. I can answer, you know, I'm not going to go in any detail and I'm not going to go okay. into 90 degrees, mm -hmm. 45, something like that. I just look mm -hmm. at a dog, beautiful leg, back and shoulder, tight shoulders, clean shoulders, and absolutely glorious return upper arm. I like to see that return upper arm, and beautiful shoulder blade. But I'm insist in something, and I'm not talking about old timers, I'm talking about people that they just start, or they have a different view. They look at those sternums coming out like an anchor, you know what I mean? That you can mm -hmm. hang there your, your mm -hmm. shoes, and they think okay. it's a good front. And it's absolutely wrong. It's absolutely mm. wrong. And maybe it's people that they can teach me and they can tell me that I'm wrong. And I totally, I will learn from anybody that can teach me that. And it's highly, I highly see in, in Facebook, people comment on a beautiful dog when the front is absolutely wrong. Mm. And it's absolutely mm. wrong. I'm going to your question. You can work on the body, on the dogs. You can... 
a, 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 a dog that probably doesn't have a great front, you can make them sit a little bit more on those shoulders. You can make them get a little bit tighter in the front too, in my, in my opinion. With work, uh, it's a lot of process there in, 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 in massaging, you know, massage those, those muscles, those muscles that get relaxed. They probably, it's not going to have the greatest front, but I promise you when, you, when you can get that front totally relaxed and muscles and you work on those bones, they, 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 they dog from the, the, from the head to the front assembly sits a little bit more, use a little bit more the front. I mean, hmm. in, in my opinion. Right. I hope hmm. I answered something True. that you didn't again, ask me. Again, the reason I asked this question... <laughs> Oh, sorry, no, no, you, you sorry, did, you sorry, did, and, sorry, and, sorry. and again, <laughs> no, 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 not at all, you know, I asked this question because a boxer is not a coated breed, right, like, for example, if this was a coated breed, you know, and a grooming plays a part, uh, but a boxer is a short coat breed, right, it should be a short coat breed, and uh, that's the reason I asked this question. Yes, I'm, but very, I'm sorry, piece... I'm very, very hard to, very hard to get, you know, when you have the front, remember the boxer, with hmm. the ears, even when they're young and they get as, as much as they get older, those front they get a little bit, they can get a little bit bulky, a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit too much. So you know, uh, it's it's uh, it, you got to be very careful, you know, with, with with the front, you know, when when you show them and and the way you raise them too, you know. Hmm. True. True. Gentlemen, do you want to weigh in on this topic? Well, I agree with. Um... Diego, um, totally. And of course, if you have a good front, is there or not? And uh, our breed is quite fair. What you see is what you get. So there's nothing more that you can um, do. So, of course, you can improve some things with uh, uh, the physical condition, as, uh, as Diego said, but uh, you cannot do miracles, of course. No, I agree on that. <laughs> uh, he mentioned the upper arm there, which is interesting in a boxer, I think. And... Uh... Uh, a, a lot of boxes are shown with very straight upper arms, I think, uh, which affects on the whole front uh, on, on the boxer as well. And if you uh, are a bit aware of the upper arm on them, uh, you could improve the front a bit uh, better because it, it's very straight on many of them. Well, it's shown straight. Right, right. Um, I want to actually move on to this question here. So I want to actually ask you this one. You show dogs, um, you know, you show dogs for a short time and you show dogs for a long time. You show dogs which for, you know, maybe years together, one year, two years together. Um, they are specials. They are special dogs which don't come often, but they are special dogs which actually you show for a longer duration of time. What I want to ask you th is this. How do you manage to keep them mentally focused you know mentally there because how do you how do you actually keep them enjoy what they do right now because it's like it's like it it's like any other thing right it's boredom right they might also get bored because they're doing the same thing again and again and again how do you keep them how do you manage to keep them focused um shall i start not, not overdoing things <laughs> what on you, you go not, ahead. not overdoing yes. things. Uh, if you're if you're in a bad mood yourself, leave the dog for itself as well, and don't do any show training or training at all if you're bad mood yourself. Uh, it's uh, for me. It's about keeping the dogs happy. Uh, it should be fun all the time. Uh, they get rewarded uh, as well. Uh, that keep them keep them happy. With what you're doing, mm. yeah. Okay. Yes, I I agree. Uh, in Europe, we don't have that many shows, and in in the states, so well, let's say we can do let's say twenty or maybe more shows per per year, and um, so they are not that that big numbers compared to the states. But it's very important to to keep them um, um, to keep their attention and to keep them um, in in a good form and always have something to keep a good motive for them. And uh, either it, this is a, a food or a, or a toy, so they are always in a good spirit. For me, this is the most important. Okay, thank you. 
for me for me uh uh is the constantly talking and having the connection with the dog you know what i mean is the 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 you have to have that connection and the talk and then i see when the dogs are coming to our house and they start to live with us uh last after like they come in with really good temperament but for the time that they're living back to their houses they look like bulls you know what i mean it's like they're really we try to make them feel like like here i mean they're superman and batman in there. you know what i mean so if you're if you're getting into that mood with them you know eh, 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 you definitely you you take everything out of them and you make them they get to the point that that that, that believe you know what, what they telling you you know what you telling them you know uh, you you got to you got to you, you like i said it's a very sensitive breed and uh, you got to talk to them one thing when i'm judging you know i see like like i charge a few times you know in the uk but the owners of the dog even they're nervous because we're all nervous there they have that special connection. When you look at those boxers, you know, those, those expressions, you know what I mean? You can see the happiness. You don't see the shyness and everything. So, I mean, everybody got something there, you know? Everybody definitely got something there. And when you show right. them, I mean, you got to talk to them. I mean, you got to talk to them. You mm-hmm. can't be there waiting. The, the judge is going to open their mouth and go over to the front. And, and I mean, you got to... I'm, I'm, I'm a believer that, that when the judge judge those dogs, when the judge go over to the dog, you talk to them. Mm-hmm. Um, to my bitches, I always say, sweetheart, come on, you're doing great, good girl. You know what I mean? Or the boy, good boy. I mean, you know what I mean? When the judges open their mouth and everything. And believe me, I mean, my, my, per- my personal opinion, you talk to them and that tail is, is up and, and the muscles are like this, you know, shivering on, on, in a good way, you know, in a good way. You got you to gotta talk to them. I understand, you know, Trunk is right. I mean, no overdo it. If you, if you don't have a great day, let it go, Louis. You know what I mean? Let it go, mm-hmm. Louis, because you're not going to, you're not going to get that fluid between you and the dog, you know? True, true, very true. Um, now, let's, let's, let's ask, let's, let me ask you this. Um, now, each of you have your own unique style. Right? Like, for example, you show dogs a particular way. Uh, and I think in one of the uh, responses you mentioned, you have to adjust your style. You have to adjust your style according to the dog. How much of that adjustment, um, you know, how much of that adjustment is, is involved? Uh, and I want to actually ask you this. If there's too much of an adjustment involved in, in changing, adjusting your style, would you take that dog? Or would you take on a dog which is more suited to your style? I'll give you an example just to elaborate this one. Let's say, for example, that a dog has to be moved at a particular pace. Right? It has to be moved at a particular pace. It has to be shown a particular way. And that's not your style. Would you still take on that dog? Go ahead, Yanni. Yes, I, I will, of course. And... Uh... I will try to adjust my my way to the to the dog, of course. Um, uh, of course, you can make some um, um, adjustments, but of course, you will try to show the dog the way it will show better f- for for it anyway. So, uh, for example, I used to show fa- four or five dogs on a dog show, uh, uh, boxers, I mean, and and each one of them I am showing it in different way. So. Uh, you have to know which one it suits one better. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone, any other gentleman? Yeah, Tron, do you, Diego, do you want to weigh in on that question or are we good to go to the next one? No, I agree with Giannis. It's, uh, I tried to adjust as well. It's, uh, uh, they, they are different-minded <laughs> Uh, some of them, and and you have to do some adjustments anyway to them, and you, and, and and it's it's, a, it's it's from both sides really. It's uh, on the dog's premises as well. It's not only the handler. It, you have, you got to have both, and you try to adjust as uh, Janne said. You show uh, several boxes uh, at the show, and they are you got to show them a bit different. You can't all top and tail all the time, or 
sometimes you got to stand in front of them or and you are just uh, try to get the advantages of the dog you are showing the, the best possible way for mm. the dog to show. true I, I think we have lost Diego but here here he is yes. he's joining us Diego welcome back so um I actually wanted to ask you this. Um, you show dogs. I, I have some. You I have dogs. some. I, I have some problems, you know, with the with the connection, and I think mm -hmm. I, I'm fine for now. But I don't know, you know, how how long I'm gonna be fine. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. For sure. I have some, I have um, some, I have... So now, you actually have. Let's say, for example, um, you're actually. Um, showing a dog and it's it's actually um you're showing a dog for a client and um how easy or hard is it for you to have a successful relationship with the client and the reason i ask you this question is because a client might actually think that this is the best dog in the world right you're more objective. As a handler, you're more objective. You say, oh, no, that's just not the best dog. This dog has its faults, and that's where I come in. I, I will show the dog. I'll make the dog, you know, I'll see the, I'll do the, my best to make the dog show well. But there's also the emotions involved. There's also winning, the happiness that comes with winning, and the sadness that comes with losing. How do you balance? How do you, is it easy? I'm just asking you, is, is it, it's, it's not a yes or no question, but I would, I would love to get you get more of this from you. Is it very easy or hard to manage client relationships as a handler? I mean, our, our particular, our particular case, we, we build a relation. I mean, we've been showing almost for the same clients for almost 20 years. You know what I mean? And, and you became, you became family. And from, from day one, their client, the, the client trusts your, your, the way that you look at a dog or what you, you think that we should show or which dog we should show. I've been very lucky that the clients, our, our clients, our friends, they really let us do our job the best we can with the dog that we have. And we definitely, before we get into the ring, we have to agree 100% on what we're going to show. If we're not going to agree, we have to find uh, or wait until it's the perfect moment to show uh, the dog that we, we would like to show. Uh, you know, it very, it, I know it's not easy, but for the time that you decided to compete, you got to have your emotions uh, put it in a, different, in, in a different refrigerator. You know what I mean? Because uh, if you get the emotions involved, I mean, it, you... you in so many ways, it will be very hard to reach the goal, winning or losing. You know what I mean? We have mm. to we have to be we have to be great winners and we have to be great losers. You know what I mean? So so it will we make at the end of the day will make the, the decision on showing a dog or not. It makes the it makes the, the that fluid you know a, a, a relation you know that fluid relation. Sure. And sure. they and they and always the client they the client uh, uh, have an opinion to offer and you're always more willing to to listen and understand and the client always got a point too, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and when you show a dog, I be I really understood over the years that that you're a, you're the handler, you're the friend, you're the mentor. They are they are your mentor too. So, so it is, is the whole package, you know, it's like, like when you read the, the, the menu, you know, from appetizer to dessert, you know, the whole thing, you know, uh, that's, that's how I, that's how I, I look at, you know. Mm, true. Uh, what would actually, uh, Yanis, I want to actually build on what Diego said. So what will, what will, you know, what have you, you know, what has successful client relationships work for you? What is, you know, or what is, what is it like? What is a successful client relationship for you? Let me ask you that. I th I think uh, uh, trusting you and trusting your uh -huh. abilities and uh, have a knowledge on the dog that we are showing and uh, of the quality. So of course there are 
you may have the best dog and they, you can win. And of course, there are days that you, you may have the same dogs and it can lose. But it's not something that it can... Um, the, I, I believe the trust is the most uh, important thing in this uh, relationship. Um, again, in, in Europe, we, we don't um, keep the dogs in, in um, as I said before, uh, in our houses and we don't I, I, I was not so fortunate to have uh, as long-term uh, uh, clients as Diego for example so um, I find it dealing with the clients sometimes it's the most difficult part because there are um, there are clients that they are really into the breed and they know what they are having their hands they, they come and uh, and uh, look on the dog shows and they can appreciate if they if they win or they lose from a better dog but there are some other clients that they only care to win. So these clients are usually the most difficult ones because they don't really know why their 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 dog might not win that day. Mm. So it's a bit um, tricky sometimes. But uh, as I said, the trust between the handler and the owner is the most important, in my opinion. Right. Uh, Tron, I, I want to ask you a variation of the question. Sometimes, do you think it's difficult to manage the client than the dog? Mm, yes, some of the clients might have some high expectations uh, and uh, maybe not the right reason for it. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it could be hard to explain that. Uh, you try to explain that th there's no perfect dog. Uh, uh, some might blame you not showing the dog good enough. Mm. Uh, well, uh, humans are pretty good finding excuses uh, for things. Uh, and uh, But I don't find it a problem. You might lose handling it uh, again and uh, the same thing happens. So it's, uh, but on the other hand, sometimes you, you handle some outsiders uh, for people who, who doesn't really know. Uh, and you do great with them, and it's a great pleasure to give them a, a good experience with dog showing. Uh, they might come back. <laughs> and uh, But I, I, I don't find the clients are pretty good, I think. It's... Uh, explaining some some of them uh, you can explain the, the the quality the dogs got and not the quality is missing as well then uh, and it's uh, right. but, but it's pretty good I don't have big problems okay. with it okay um, my, my, my next question is, is going to be this um, dog shows are for selection of breeding stock right we all uh, think um, you know the winning dogs typically are the ones that decide the course of the breed right um, i know that three people decide the course of the breed according to my according that, to that, me. that doesn't mean that the winning dog is the right dog i mean some agree <laughs> I mean, you know what i mean no agreed right. agreed agreed uh, See, handlers decide what type of dogs to breed. Judges decide what type of dogs um, get to win. Um, but handlers play an important role in deciding the course of the breed because you, uh, they, you know, I've heard this, a, uh, uh, an, a, an excellent handler with an average dog makes the dog win. Even if it's an average uh, handler with an excellent dog. Right? So the handling makes a difference. So with that said, what do you think are the moral and uh, moral responsibilities of the handler in promoting the breed? Yes. <laughs> okay. I can say the, 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 the sewing and the breeding is totally, they are tot not totally different, but you can, as Diego said, uh, not the best dog in the show is the dog the best dog to breed from. Um, so um, for me, the the, um, the breeder has uh, the most important role, and uh, of course, the, um, there are some dogs that they might win at some years, and maybe are the top winnings uh, dogs, and um, and they may have some 
in my opinion, they might have some also major faults. And then you see all the people they want to use these dogs, blah, blah, blah. And you see dogs. So in my opinion, the breeder has to be, stay focused on the standard, not, not follow the, um, the fashion. Um, and what I always do as, as a breeder, I don't w want to go and use one dog because it's winning. I want to use one dog because it's the, the most correct uh, dog. Um, the handler, of course, if has a good dog in his hands, he can do well. But um, the most important role in breeding for me <coughs> is it's it's the, it's the breeder, not 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 uh, not the judge, not not the handler. Okay, perfect. Thank you. When when I guy when 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 I mentioned that sometimes the dog that win, I mean, is not is not the the the, the yeah, yes yes the great the perfect dog or something like that. I mean it is like always like like you got maybe judges they gotta make decision and maybe in like three really good dogs. You know what I mean? And and you picking one part or another one, you know what I mean? Uh, because we have like really, I mean, outstanding dogs that they win and they are outstanding, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a highly I'm a highly believer. I mean, when you're a handler, you made the decision to be a handler, you definitely you gotta try to 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 you have the responsibility to show a dog that is a world representative of the breed mm -hmm. that you had in your hands. You know what I mean? So, so, so that's us. You have to take that as a big responsibility. And uh, maybe you say, no, but it's some handlers or ourselves that probably we show though that probably is not as close as the standard. But I mean, I will, uh, you know, we like to see people maybe asking you the reasons why you show that particular dog. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so, so. Right. That right. that can make you make make a decision on why or why you don't show a dog. That's my point. Right, right. Uh, Tron, I want to actually, I want to ask you this. So I I know that um, I I know and and this is more specific to European context. Um, it basically um, let's say for example hypertype hypertype in boxes like for example exaggeration in style. You know, maybe with the with with the way the boxer looks looks a particular way. Do you think handlers make it make it possible for those type of dogs to win? No, not really. It's nah. I think judges make it possible to win in in these cases. I, I don't think handlers really. It, mm. it, it's very hard to. To, to hide the uh, exaggerations in, in, in dogs, I think. Uh, uh, no, not really. Uh, it's uh, it, they shouldn't win. Uh, the boxes, European boxes, have gone uh, maybe the wrong way in many terms. Uh, uh, and that's, uh, in, in the last question you asked about uh, handlers' responsibility, I think the breeders' knowledge is the key word to uh, not only use, just don't use the, the win, top winning dog, it's, uh, breeding is about combinations. Uh, the, the breeder should have the, have the knowledge to, to find the best suitable dog, not the winning dogs, necessarily the winning dogs, but the, a bitch might need totally different things than uh, than the winning dog for the winning male for the dog <laughs> for the day so uh, and, and that's about exaggerations as well and if uh, if the beach only got a bitch which is exaggerated in some way you should absolutely not get <laughs> that kind of male then uh, but Okay. No, I don't think um, we can. And when you and, and when you're talking about, I mean, we we can't trust. We can't trust me. Trust me is I don't know if my English is right, but I mean, we're talking about styles. It's just mm. not a style. It's just one standard to follow. I mean, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. The style is what been being seen over the years, and 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 you know what I mean. Probably you have to stick with the standard. You know what I mean? An over angulated dog with a tail set like it's coming right right after the neck is coming the tail set, or long, you know what I mean? A streaming, I mean, or long body. I mean, it's just that's a style, but it's just not the standard. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 those comments sometimes on Facebook with the, the wow, wow. 
I mean, you, you know what I mean? It, that style, it's just, it will never gonna, it's just not the standard, you know? Uh, and we've been seeing this over and over coming, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, through the through the years, you know? Uh, and then people, you know, you don't win and then the people that they get surprises, you know, they get a little bit surprised. Or because, right. a, because a dog doesn't gonna make, or doesn't gonna reach the goal in the United States and maybe reach the goal in Europe, or South America, it still, it doesn't mean that it's going to reach or reach the standard. It will be a style. You know what I mean? But it's just not, right. uh, uh, we have to, 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 to grab the microphone and, and talk about that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a high, it's a high topic, you know? I see a sure. lot of people that run the world and in India get excited and excited. And we're talking about, and you see an, an style that probably, it doesn't meet the breed, you know, the, 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 the in so many ways, doesn't meet the breed, you know, the, the, the standard, so. True. It's quite interesting. The standard is quite similar. All the standards are quite similar, but the dogs is very different. Mm. Yes, yes. True, true. Um, gentlemen, I want to actually ask you, I want to ask you these questions. These are, I want to get your opinion on these questions. Um, this is not a knowledge, it's an opinion question. Um, would you actually show under a judge you have never won under? And if that's the case, um, would you rather cut your losses because that's the best thing to do? Or would you have the dog shown by your assistant? What would you do? Well, in, in Europe, when I don't have an assistant, so um if i'm yes i will show the dog and i don't mind um so yes okay i will have it another go you'll give it a go okay yeah. diego what about you would you give it a go or would you actually hold yourself back you absolutely you have to show okay. you have to show because you will never, you, you never know, probably you're going to have the judge maybe a year later judging again. And you probably showing a different dog. Uh, you have to show. You have to show respect to the judge in no matter situation you are. Sometimes you have, a, you have a top winning dog that is in the ring winning so many best in show. And you have a, a dog that just started. Uh, probably you decided, okay, we have a four-day show. I'm going to give this youngster a little bit of break because he definitely is not going to win the breed. Uh, but you're giving the, 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 the rest and the, the, the happiness to the youngster, knowing that he's a well-represented dog of the breed right there in the, in the ring ring. And the judge, you know what I mean? He will judge dogs. You know what I mean? Uh, no, no, you have, you have to show. You have to show to them. You have to show to them. I mean, uh, and that doesn't mean that one day that the, the, the dog, your dog is not going to win. And maybe depend the competition. Maybe the next week is a different competition. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you, you have to show. It's Got all it. about reputation. You're building your reputation in so many ways. As an owner, as a breeder, and as a handler. Sure. So your reputation sure. at the end of the day does want to make you be untouchable, you know, for your career as a breeder, owner, handler uh, in this, in this, in this, in the sport. Uh, True. True. Um, I'm going to actually, um, I have a, I have the last few questions, last Battery. few questions here for you. Um, I, I know that um, a lot of people are watching you. I know that a lot of people are watching you when you show dogs. How do you think people see you? How do you think people see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you think people see you? Arrogance. What? Arrogance. Okay. Can you can you substantiate that? I'm a, I, I, I always been. I'm a better now than I used to be. I'm a bit tunnel sighted at shows, and uh, I, I, it's nothing. Uh, I, I, it's, I'm concentrated on what I'm supposed to do, and I got a bit tunnel side. I, I, I'm in my own thing, and I'm concentrating on it. And uh, and it could seem a bit arrogant sometimes. Yeah, 
uh, I'm not mean to, but uh, I'm very focused on what I'm supposed to do, uh, especially when I got some high hopes for the show. Uh, yeah. And uh, I hope see some uh, qualities as well, and I hope somebody will uh, learn something. Okay, okay. So Janis, I have exact same question for you. So how do you how do you how do how do you think people see you? I hope in a good way. Uh, and um, well, as Trod said, I'm always focused in uh, with the dogs <coughs> that I have to show. And usually on a Greek show, I might have two or three dogs more or less in the same time in different rings. So I have to be focused on on the dog that I'm um, um, showing at that moment. Um, I always like to to respect the the, um, the other exhibitors, and uh, I I think I'm very polite with everyone. I don't I don't mess, and I don't have I'm doing so. I, I believe in a good way. Okay, um, Diego, I have the exact same question. No change. How do you think people see you? I hope I hope the people see me as a as a very professional in, in our sport, you know, and trying always to do my best. And uh, I mean, I keep always focused in our, in our dogs and what I have to do. And sometimes probably I'm not a great, a great talker during the, during the, during the day that the shows, you know, but, but I hope they, they see me as a, as a, as a very professional and, uh, and it's not a message for the people, but I hope they, the youngsters and the, the kids that are doing this and the people, you know, the, between, I don't know, 15, 18 years old, that they can see something, take something really, really good out of, out of ourselves, you know, out of Yanni, Strong, myself, you know. Uh, we, 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 try, we try to always to, to send a, a good message, you know, a really a good message. Mm. And I, I, you know, and, and, and probably... I, I, I don't, it's not my, my intention never to try to feel people that sometimes they get a little bit intimidated or things like that. It's just how I am, you know, when I'm showing. After the show, you, we finish showing a, a, and, and it's time to really talk and talk about the show and standard and, and, have, a, and have a good time. But I mean, we have a, a purpose while we're, when, during the day while we're there. You know what I mean? So, so, true. so that's, true. that's how I see it. Very true. Um, what keeps you guys, gentlemen, going? Um, it, you know, I, I know I asked this question about a dog. I said, um, you know, how does you, how do you keep the dog motivated? You know, if you're doing, showing the dog year after year after year, how do you keep yourself motivated to show year after year after year and show after show after show? What is your motivation? You guys, let me let me answer that fast because you know what is my motivation right now. I'm running out of battery, so okay. I don't want to be without answering. I don't know the the, the, the motivation is, is is always is always there. It keeps me going. It keeps me going. Try to see in my 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 backyard. I mean the dog that I can reach the 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 the, the goal. You know what I mean? That I can really reach. Uh, I got the pleasure of showing really beautiful dogs and boxers, but I think I can reach the ultimate, ultimate boxer, you know, or, or, or at least one more to, to, to keep me, to keep me, keep me going, you know? Uh, so, so, you know, it just, just, just try to reach and see the, 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 the dog uh, that, that you can, you, you know, you can feel it, it will be, it will be the, the best dog. Unfortunately, the years are coming, getting closer, you know, I'm almost 50, and I have the same passion that when I was 18, but it just takes me a few more hours to realize that, you know what I mean? So many, many things. So anyway, uh, all the very best. And if I cut off, uh, it was a great, great conversation, and I'm wishing you the very, very best, and thank you for the invitation. Tron, I hope I can meet you one day. And Yanni... I hope I have a room in Greece to go to, to, to anyway. you can show me around, okay? Anytime. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. while well, we wait for Diego, uh, you know, well, he can, he can drop off anytime now, but I want to ask you the same question, Yanis and Tron. 
what keeps it, what makes yes. it going? Passion and I think, yeah. I think uh, for the dog sport uh, in itself, and, and you got to enjoy, enjoy some competition as well. Uh, but uh, and, and to improve as well is uh, you always got something to learn. Uh, uh, but the heart and passion for it, and, uh, and, and and you think it's fun, you enjoy doing it. Uh, okay. I like that's what I like about it. Uh, it's no problem for me to get the motivation to do to go to a dog show. Okay, what about you, Janus? Well, it's my love for the dogs and the passion for the for the dog showing. Uh, I, I've been doing this for more than 25 years and uh, I still uh, enjoy of being in the ring like the first day. So I'm very much looking forward every day to go to the rings and uh, wake up early. And uh, um, anyway, and I really like to be in the rings. Even uh, when I had my, I had a very um, serious accident uh, five years ago and I broke my leg and I was um, one year outside the rings. I was counting the days until I go back. And since the day, the, 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 the day one that I had the surgery, I was dreaming of the day that I would be back in the rings. And, uh, so for me, it's, it's a passion. So that's uh, what I can say. Wonderful. Gentlemen, that actually completes our uh, session today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, it was it was a slice. You know, it was I had a lot of fun asking you these questions. Um, and I think this was the next best thing to actually showing with you, uh, showing dogs with you. But I hope that opportunity presents itself sometime in the future when I get to actually rub shoulders with you inside the ring and not on the other side of the camera. I, I certainly do look forward to that moment. Uh, do you have any parting thoughts before we finish, before we end this interview or end the session? I hope uh, for young people, uh, as Diego mentioned as well, 15, 18 years old, uh, I watch a bit junior handling because it's uh, the boxers is in, are in group two in uh, in the FCI in Norway. And in front of us, at the, in, for the groups, it's always junior handling. It's... Uh, very fun to see them. There are some very talented handlers there. Uh, and I hope uh, boxer people will start using the young ones as well as handlers because they're pretty good. Just a few a few comments before before we leave. Uh, 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 I will just say that the people they just start and the people they doing these are the youngsters or they're just new people that are coming in. Don't, don't, don't really, don't lose your time in criticizing the competition because it will be the time that is going to be valuable for you to really improve yourself and really keep focus on your dog, how, to, how you can make that dog reach the goal to go into the ring and enjoy yourself and the dog's going to enjoy the, the same too. If you, that is a very valuable time. If you're losing time in criticizing the competition or criticizing the judge or criticizing the handlers, why they're winning is always a reason for everything. So don't lose that time because that's valuable for you to keep you motivated and going in the right way and using the right path, okay? Big hugs to everybody, okay? See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, uh, are you here? Hello? Mm, I'm here. Chris? Uh, I see. I only see you, Trod. I don't see uh, Chris. I don't see Chris either. I only see you as well. <laughs> okay. Chris? Can you see us? No. Oh, so it was over. It's okay. over. Bye so, then. Lovely. Bye bye. Speak lovely to see. You. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.
I apologize for uh, the technical issues that we're facing. I guess we have to, uh, I don't have any of the uh, other participants, but again, for those ones who are still continuing to watch this session, uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, and I, I, it was a slice and like I said, it was, uh, it was an excellent session, uh, you know, a lot of knowledge uh, for me, and I hope it was for you as well. Thank you so much again for your time, um, and have yourself a wonderful weekend or whatever is left of it. Thank you very much.